Um, this is a um, polar equation, the format for graphing a polar equation. And I thought it would be a good idea to make sure we understand what in the world we're talking about. When you understand this concept, um, finding the equation going backwards will make more sense. So let's kind of go through this and understand the language here. Um, e represents eccentricity. Um, this is just cosine of theta. And if I graph this equation in polar coordinates, which I'm going to show you how to do, it'll it'll hopefully make more sense. So let's look at um, plotting some points to understand the graph. So let's first draw. We don't have an xy graph, do we? We have a angle 0. We have an angle pi over 2. We have an angle pi. We have an angle 3 pi over 2. Okay, and whenever we have our points, um, we're going to, I don't know how many we'll need, but let's go out a few, just so we'll see it. And what we're going to do is plug some points in so that we can get back the polar coordinates so we can graph it. So one thing to remember, whenever it's in this form, if it's um, 1 minus, if it's cosine in the denominator, it's going to be a polar graph that goes left or right. That's important. If it's cosine in the denominator, it's going to be a polar graph um, left or right. If it's minus, the directrix will be on your left. If it's plus, the directrix will be on your right. And it just depends on the type of graph. Okay. If you remember, for an ellipse, if your eccentricity is basically a fraction, but if it's um, between 0 and 1, it's going to be an ellipse. If your E is equal to 1, then it's going to be a parabola. And if your E is greater than 1, it's going to be a hyperbola. That's really important to understand. All right? It just kind of tells you what type of figure you're going to draw. All right, and where your directrix would be if you do that. Um, this particular one, well, you want to take this and make, this is my example. Um, we'll do that next. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let's make a little table. We're going to make a table, plot some points. We want to keep it simple. Uh, we need here the angle measurements. So we're going to label this theta. And we need 0. We need pi over 2. We need pi. We need 3 pi over 2. And this is going to be our r. Because remember, your angle measurements, um, they're always theta, comma, r, which is the radius. And it always goes from the center of your polar coordinates. And again, I'm getting ahead of myself. So what I want to do, I'm going to plug in 0 to this function, which would be, and we'll write it over here, it's going to be 6 over 1 minus cosine of 0. Well, now we got to remember what is cosine of 0. Well, if you don't remember that, you just need your unit circle. In your unit circle, I know this order pair. Now we're back to rectangular coordinates. Um, this is always 1 comma 0. This is uh, 0, 1. This is negative 1, 0. And this is 0, negative 1. Just the order pair. So cosine of 0, remember cosine is the x value, um, sine is the y. So my cosine is of 0 is going to be 1. Does that make sense? So here, um, you know what? I think I wrote the wrong problem down. This should be a 2. Sorry about that. That should be a 2. A two. All right, so now I'm going to plug in here. I'm going to plug in 6 over 2 minus cosine of, what am I plugging in? 0. Well, cosine of 0 is 1. So really this is 6 over 2 minus 1. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's just 6 over 1, which is, that's going to be 6. All right, not too bad, right? Let's plug in power over 2. If I plug in power over 2, we're looking here. 
cosine is that's going to be this up here at the top. So what is cosine of pi over 2? Cosine of pi over 2, let's write it down. So 6 over 2 minus cosine of pi over 2. Well, pi over 2 is 0. So that's 2 minus um, nothing. So this is going to be 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So this is 3. So now i got some points, so I can kind of sketch it, going backwards. Plug in pi. So it's going to be 6 over cosine, excuse me, 2 minus cosine of pi. What's cosine of pi? Negative 1. So it's 2, 6 over 2 minus negative 1. Well, 2 minus negative 1 is plus. So that's 2 plus 1, which is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And I'll do the same thing here for 3 pi over 2, which is going to be at the bottom down here. Cosine 3 pi over 2, well, that's the same as um, cosine of pi over 2. Um, so I could plug it in, but cosine 3 pi over 2 is going to be 0. And so it's going to be like this one here. So it's just like pi over 2. So that one's going to be 3. Now, let's understand how to graph this. The way you graph it, uh, let's use another color. Use purple. On the zero axis, this is your zero axis for polar coordinates. On the zero axis, I'm going to go out six units. One, two, three, four, five, six, which will be about here. All right. On my pi over two axis, which is this one, I'm going to go up three units. One, two, three. I'm already kind of seeing what kind of picture I'm getting, right? Um, here, I'm going to go pi units. I'm going to go 2. And then for 3 pi over 2, I'm going to go down 3. Okay. And already I see my parabola. Looks something like this. And you at 1 foci is always at the start. So this is your foci in it. It's, this is for all of the um, conic sections. They're always, um, if it's in this form, it's going to be here at the um, at the middle. It's going to be on one of the foci, focal points. Um, the parabola only has one focal point. So the directrix, since this is a minus, is going to be on the left side. Okay, on the left side. It's going to be over here someplace. But we need to figure out where that someplace is. So, hmm, what do I do next? So let me erase this stuff because now I don't need this anymore. I got my points here. All right, so next what I would do, uh, let's make this orange. I need to find my E value, which I should have did in the first place because I really didn't know it was a parabola. I guess I just, excuse me, ellipse. I just kind of assumed that. So. And I think in some of the problems they tell you what it is. So I want to make this equation look like this because I want my E. I need my E value. So the way you do that, hmm, I want to make this 2 a 1. Then I'm there. So basically I'm going to divide everything by 2 or multiply everything by a half. A half times 6 is 3. Half times 2 is 1. Minus a half times that is just a half times that. 1 half cosine of theta. Well now it's beautiful. And I say it's beautiful because now I know it is. Just relate this equation to this. E is equal to a half. Well that's nice because I know it's an ellipse, which I probably should have did that first to show you that. But that just kind of confirms that it's an ellipse. Okay. Now let's see. Hmm. I want to grab that directrix. So I need to find my D value. Well, look at this. This is nice. I know that 3 is equal to ED. See that? I'm just comparing the equations. So I'm going to say 3 equals, well, I know E now. E is a half times D. I need to solve this for D. Almost there. Solve this for D. Multiply by 2. Bam. That clears over here. D is equal to 6. So since I know it's 6, that's the distance from that center pole to the directrix. 
So I know my directrix is off to the left because that's a minus. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's my line I'm going to draw. And that's your directrix. So that's going to be your graph using polar coordinates. And I think if you understand this, you can kind of reason backwards to write the equation if you understand this form. And if it was the same form and this was um, sine, it's going to be instead of going left or right, it's going to be up or down. So anyway, this is just one example. Um, if you have any more questions, send me a specific problem if this doesn't help. So I can kind of, I can, I can work a specific detail problem for you. So, all right. Thank you.